Hey everyone, welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about spring weight loss motivation. We got about three months starting today till summer starts. And what a lot of people do is <clears throat> they wait too long. They wait too long to get motivated. It won't be until you know the end of May. And it's oh, I gotta lose the weight for summer. Now's the time to tap into that motivation and start getting focused. Um, Easter's over and you got a nice chunk of time here where the weather's starting to pick up. Uh, things are supporting you. There's not a lot of like holiday things going on for a lot of people. So hopefully this is a great time of year to really get focused and, you know, kind of hit it again. And this brings me to a greater point that breaking up your weight loss goals a couple times a year is a great strategy. You do not just want to have January 1st. We need to break it up into different chunks. And I think that's helpful. And um, maybe January 1st is always your most motivated. That's fine. But you really want to take care of the spring motivation because sometimes I've found that to be the most powerful motivation. Because again, you, you've got what, what goals you want to achieve for summer, right? You want to wear your, your summer outfits and it, there's a lot of motivation you can tap into there. The weather starts to get better. Spring springs and uh, that feels good motivationally. So there's a lot of things supporting your motivation during this time. So it makes sense to get clear on what your goals are. So that being said, let's tap into them, right? Because it's one thing to know you want to lose weight and it's another thing to actually feel the motivation. And it's so easy to feel the motivation. All you need to do is to step into the results that you want to experience over the next couple months. And so if you imagine it's uh, you know, the beginning of July, July 1st, and it's been three months of successfully focusing on your weight, getting results that you're looking forward to, and you've achieved them. Where do you think you would be? Okay. Now, again, let's set the expectations. We don't want to be ridiculous with our expectations, but we also want to be setting them so they are exciting. And so imagine it is July 1st and you wake up and you've experienced the results that you want to achieve over the last three months. I don't want you to step into that body. Where do you think you can be three months from now? And just step into that body and notice how it feels to wake up in that body, to go throughout the day as that version of you. Feel that success. Feel the weight loss and how you notice it in your body. Do you move differently? Do you hold yourself differently? Do your clothes fit differently? I want you to notice how they fit. How do you want them to fit? Feel that. Imagine walking around in this version of your body, this version of you, where you've been successful. So it's not just the weight loss results, but it's also the accumulation of taking action, doing things that are moving you in the direction of your goal. So it's not just a physical benefit. It's a mental and emotional benefit of being on track for a couple months, of approaching the summer with momentum, feeling good about yourself, feeling successful. These are the things that are really exciting. So the more you start to focus on these, the more you start to put your mind into your results that you want to achieve and operate out of that place, the more motivating it becomes. And then you could imagine going through the summer, continuing to move forward with the results that you want to get. But how would the summer be different? Do you imagine yourself having a, having a better time going to the beach, going in different things you might want to do, feeling more comfortable in your body, physically, mentally, emotionally? So again, the more real you make the results that you want to achieve in your mind, the more motivation you tap into and the more strategic you get with your motivation, realizing there's different motivation in the spring. There's different motivation in the fall and the winter and then obviously in January 1st. So utilize those different times a year and remember that motivation is something you have to nurture. You have to keep it up. You don't just get motivated once and stick with that. You have to get the motivation up and then maintain it. And the, one of the best ways to do it is going to break your year up into chunks and connect to the specific goals that that season brings for you. All right. And the more you do this, I think the better time you'll have. So I, I hope this helps you out. I wish you the best with your spring weight loss. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. And uh, we will get into them. I better go on for a little bit here. I got to get my uh, get myself back uh, back on track. So get that, that camera working. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. Feeling fresh as a daisy. I don't know if I feel. <laughs> That's the funny thing about going away. It's uh, it was very relaxing, and then you get in vacation mode, and then there was Easter on top of that. So nice to be back, though. Nice to be back, back in the routine. <laughs> What's up, Jody? Hi, right, Jim Withrall. Reentry week. Yep, walk a dog. Listen to the best coach. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, reentry week for sure, for sure, for me too. Um. Went away for a couple of days and 
Yeah, eat the hell out of food. <laughs> yeah, that's sore back. That actually was that was a little hard. Um having a sore back during the my days off there. Yeah, that looks good. So yeah, so I'm glad to be back. Uh Caitlin says, down almost 50 pounds from this time last year. Wow, your lives and emails really helped keep me on track. That is awesome. Let me get a screenshot of that. Great job, Caitlin. That is wonderful. What an accomplishment. 50 pounds is wonderful. And the bigger accomplishment is, is for a year. Okay. So one year of doing that is just super, super fantastic. I'm proud of you because uh, it's a consistency. So yeah, you're in a great spot. And hopefully, yeah, you listen to me, you're doing it in a way that's relatively comfortable. So you're setting yourself up next year. You're even, I don't know, I don't know where your goals are. Um, maybe you're there, but regardless, next year at this time, you're just optimizing everything you're doing. You know, that that's the way I want you to think about it. And so congratulations. That's wonderful. I'm glad the lives and emails are helping you out. That is uh, quite an accomplishment. 50 pounds, a lot of weight. And again, a year is a good amount of time. So that's a nice foundation to have under you. What's up, Chuck? How's it going? I'm excited about fresh fruit growing again. Oh, I hear you, right? Nothing like fresh local produce where I'm at. There, there's a ton of farms around me, so it is kind of nice. This time of year is wonderful. Um, we have a lot of good food growing where I'm at, and it's nice to get local or food, so that is good. Um, thanks for your Easter email. No, you're welcome. Yeah, those help, don't they? Uh, and by the way, everyone here, if, if you're not in my world, you should go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session, Watch the video I made for you. Read the emails I send to you. I do a lot of things to kind of help you, keep you on track and, and keep you going here. Um, and if you can't do that through like a TikTok, you go to my bio, Instagram, you go to my bio, or you can just go to programyourselfthen.com if you're listening to this on a podcast. And uh, you can get the free hypnosis session that's there. And what you're getting now as well is I give you, I have been packaged together exactly what I want to yet, but you get all the same stuff, but I call it the spark program and this is completely free and spark meaning it's really built to motivate you. And so I, I give you a bunch of free stuff, but I, one of the things I give you is this training um, that I just put together probably a week or two ago. It's a motivation training. And so I'm going to be putting that, I'm going to be packaging all that together in a spark membership area, but that's all going to be free. So you, you will get that. If you're on my list, I'll be, I'll definitely have that out this week. And if you're not, um, I'm a list, just get on there because I'll be sending out to you. Whoops. Oh, live gifts. All right. Uh, Kathy G, new here. What happens here? Oh, uh, we just talk about weight, you know, talk about weight. I get all mad sometimes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, uh, yeah, just trying to help people out. I like to think that I, I give people a different perspective on weight, you know, so the, the, the prime distinction between weight that we talk about here that's different than you normally get is usually you're hearing about weight loss. This is much more about weight mastery and you don't hear that very often. And so the big difference being weight loss is all about losing weight. Weight mastery is all about living at your goal weight for the rest of your life on near autopilot. So they are two completely different goals. And when you start to, at the very least, realize there's another way to approach this, a lot of times uh, it gets easier because dieting is, is one of the worst strategies there is to master your weight. And if you've been struggling with your weight, Usually it's not you, it's the plans you've been trying to follow and um, the diets primarily, they don't work. So yeah, that's what happens here. Uh, what's up, Sarah? March is madness in my house with birthdays and Easter this year. All right, so yeah, March uh, March coming to an end. Uh, yeah, that's how it goes. I wasn't perfect, but I stayed consistent and enjoyed the celebrations. Down seven pounds this month. Sarah, take a picture of that because that that's wonderful. That, that's that's the stuff. I'll be honest. I always like people's weight loss stories, but I always like the context, like reading through the lines. So I just hear, um, you know, losing 50 pounds over a year. I love hearing that because now there's stability built in there. There's long-term thinking that has to be part of that. I love hearing people with their struggle months. We've all got good and e easier and harder months. And so, yeah, when you got birthday parties and all the rest of it, it gets you. I, I know like that because I got my kids... They're, they're four days apart, I think, five days apart, their birthdays. Uh, my cousin's right in between them. And so it's three birthday parties typically in a week. And uh, it's easier now because they're a little older. It's not as big a deal. But um, back in the day, it was it was harder. It was a lot of thought and all the stuff. So, yeah, great job, Sarah. That that So what I the reason I make a big deal of that is you always, folks, you've got to grade yourself on a curve. And I know my, my people hate to hear this because, um, you know, honestly, if you're even here listening to me, you're probably an overthinker. You're probably somewhat a perfectionist type A-ish person. And so the biggest message I always try and share, because I know who I'm talking to. I, I know I'm the, the people that are in my program are always this type of person. So one of the biggest challenges is letting go of the perfectionism, not always expecting 
the the best result because because it's just not going to work again sarah has a crazy month right so you got birthdays you know easter other things going on in march you're going to have a harder time in march than you do perhaps on than april and may okay there's just there is life folks you know what i mean like dieters they just look at it like oh this is my diet i'm just going to follow it perfectly no matter what and it's like no you're not it, life does matter and if you got extra birthdays or extra responsibilities certain times of the year uh it's going to make it harder not to say that you can't occasionally white knuckle and do perfect but obviously you know like like a holiday month versus a month where you know everything's working with you you're going to do better most likely so grading yourself on a curve is one of the greatest things you can do and it's also one of the things my, my clients never want to do because they always want to be perfect but when you start grading yourself on a curve you start to appreciate it. holy shit seven pounds down this month on a month like this that's amazing because how the last month's been the mar marches you know how the last march has been where it's like you got birthday parties and, and Easter's and all this stuff going on for most people in a, in a diet mindset, it's, they're, they're just, they scrap it. it it's very, cause again, most dieters are all or nothing. And so again, you'll see people in my program are able to weather the storms of, of holiday months, vacation months, birthday months, you know, and, and still stay on track and succeed. You know, and then then the, the next month comes like, oh, all right, that was a tough month. Now I'm ready to really, really kick it, you know, really, really get myself going. And that's normal. That That's normal life, right? You're not a you're not a robot. You can't be the, this perfect person no matter what the situation is. So great job, Sarah. That is that is wonderful. And I love hearing that. Yep, user 162 says, I love your emails. They make my day. Well, that makes me happy. And I apologize. I was supposed to get those emails out um before i left and and it didn't happen so yeah a couple of days no emails went out and i was i feel bad about this i like send those emails out i know they're grounding because you just you listen the weight loss world you just you're you're just exposed to dumb shit constantly i mean it is out of control and it's even well-meaning -mean people you know but it's like it's so much bullshit out there so i like to be a, a ray of sanity and uh, I love getting those emails out there. I think those emails are great, <laughs> personally. I think they're wonderful. So I'm glad you enjoyed them, and I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad they make your day. Um, thanks for posting the videos and the emails. Yeah, they're very informative, helpful. Yeah, Chuck, I appreciate you saying that too because that's another thing. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. I got I got some shifts happening in the program itself, then world, and I'm super excited about them. Um, the the first of it being that you know the, the prime. If you want to get in my world, the, the prime way to get in my world now will be the program itself and system without coaching. It, it will be sold without coaching now. Um, I have to start kind of limiting that a little bit. But um, yeah, so so it's a much lower price for a lot of people that I know have been interested in, in working um, with my program. But but again, it's been a higher price because of the coaching, but that's changed now. And then there are some other, I'm breaking the program up as well so you can even get smaller versions of that if that's more comfortable for you but there's a lot of cool stuff coming and that, that's just some of the paid stuff but there's a lot of free stuff coming as well and um i'm excited because I'm, I'm doing that's what I, I was thinking of the last couple of days i was like geez i'm like i'm making so much content but i use i use none of it <laughs> so that's part of what i'm doing is trying to get more more value and kind of offer you guys more videos and, and support you know in an easier way yeah awesome april has arrived yeah april's a fun one i think right april's pretty good as long as you get your taxes done, that, that's a big one for some people. Um, Amanda says, how do I know if I'm under eating? Three pounds loss over two months, I've drastically increased my protein. Um, well, you know, let's see. Three pound loss over two months. Uh, and that's not a lot of weight loss. I don't know where you're at. So it's, it's so hard for me to say. I have no problem with three pounds over two months. Like, like you know, me, a couple of years ago, I wanted to lose... I'd raised my goal weight by 10 pounds during a kind of a stressful period of life. And I was fine with that. And I said, you know what, this summer I'm going to drop five pounds. I gave myself three, four months to do that. So now I'm not saying that's what you may want to do, depending everyone's got different goals. I was close to my goal weight. But the point I'm trying to make is that when I set goal weights for myself, I am not looking at the weight part of it. That, that's a piece of it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm more looking at my behavior and my eating part of it. And so I'm looking to like, so if I want to drop five pounds, I'm not thinking like, oh, how can I drop five pounds? Because I can drive five, five pounds fast. I just, I'll weight cut my calories down and drop five pounds in a week or two. But that's not, that's not long-term thinking. Do you understand? So when I look at, I want to drop five pounds, I look at how I typically eat and I say, okay, where can I strategically, where would be the easiest place for me to cut some calories down? 
and that I can maintain and keep up. So, you know, I'm always looking at my, what I'm doing, the process of how I eat and how I live. And I'm looking, what do I want to slice out of that? Where would be the easiest thing to cut some calories if I want to lose weight? So um, how do you know if you're under eating? I mean, under eating, I guess the first thing I would say is your hunger levels, you know, would be the first thing I would look at to know if you're under eating. Uh, that, that weight loss doesn't make me think you're under eating, you know, three pounds over two months, but um, you've drastically increased the protein. You know, I don't know. My, my first thought of three pounds in two months, I would say you're probably not cutting as many calories as you think you are. Now, this is just generalized. So, so don't, I, I, I hate doing this because without knowing the specifics of a situation, I could be missing something big, but I'm just going with general stuff. If, if someone came to me and said, I lost three pounds in two months, I've been cutting out calories, increasing protein. I would say you probably haven't cut as many calories as you think you have, is what I would say. And I think this is true for most people. Most people, even when they're tracking, you know, even the labels on the side of the things are estimated to be 20% off. So, you know, the, the, the calorie tracking certainly is the most effective as I've seen in the short term. Most people don't want to do it long term, but if you're not losing much weight, I would say that you probably haven't cut my calories out and you're probably not under eating or you probably would have lost more weight than that. Now that's being said without knowing your starting point. So I wish I could give you more specifics, but I'd need more details. What are your thoughts on Ozempic about to start? Um, well, Angie, I mean, my main thing here is that I want to be supportive, you know, so uh, my, my program is program yourself. Then, I mean, it, it's a mindset, holistic based weight mastery approach. That being said, I do have some people in the program that are on the medications, the GLP ones, um, and they're doing the program while they're learning actual strategies, right? But it, it's like a crutch, you know, in the program. Um, what I think of Ozempic in general you know, it depends on the person. It depends on the person's situation. So I never answer anything just like blanket statements. Uh, I don't love medications when they're not necessary, you know, and I find a lot of times in my experience, Ozempic's not necessary. It's just people feel desperate because they've tried every diet, but all the diets are bullshit. The diets don't, the diets aren't a real strategy to master your weight. Diets are, and this is like so obvious. I say this all the time, but it's like, it's really important for you to see this. Diets are really set up as temporary ways to drastically lower your weight relatively quickly. They're, they're not set up for you to live your life long term. And we know this because the number one diet of all time, right? Or the most popular diet right now is, is keto. And it's like, I don't, I don't know, you know, I say this every day because it needs to be said. I'm not arguing that you will lose weight on keto quickly, but no one sticks with keto. It's a miserable way to live. And I, I mean, if you're listening to this and you've done keto, you already know this. You, you fucking, how many times you tried keto and then started and stopped it? So it's like, I'm just saying the quiet part out loud that pretty much every diet that's out there that you would ever think of doing. Um, yeah, I mean, if you do it strictly, you might lose some weight for a little while. But the problem is always the same problem that you won't do it for long because you don't like doing it. It's too strict. It's too overwhelming. It sucks to keep it up. And so those are my first thoughts. And so what you've done to lose weight before you know, starting Ozempic is you've probably done typical diets. You've probably done Weight Watchers, keto, counting calories, you know, stuff like that. And it's not a real strategy. It's a tactic and it rarely works for anyone. So what I talk about is really holistic weight mastery. And it takes into account your mindset, your lifestyle, and your eating. And it's all customized to you. So it's a very, um, you know, individualized approach for you to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life. So that being said, you know, Zempic is a little bit of a shortcut in the sense that it's going to, you know, what does it do? It, it increases your GLP-1 hormone. Uh, that's what the medicine does, which will cause you to feel more satisfied from the food you're eating. It'll cause you to digest your food slower and it'll cause you to feel more satisfied so that you eat less food that, that when it works well. Now you're going to feel sick for a while. You know, it, it, it's a pretty intense medication. You have to kind of wrap your head around being on it for life, you know, so if those are all things that you're okay with, then, and, and it has no bad of impacts on you, then it, you know, listen, it's all always your choice, you know, and your weight's your choice and you get to decide what you want to do. Um, but that being said, you know, there, there are natural ways to go about this. And, uh, you know, I, I just did a whole thing on Oprah. I, you, you might be interested in it. I made a, a longer video on my YouTube channel, which is YouTube Jim Katsoulis. And you can search for Oprah Ozempic. And I went a lot more in detail to it, but the main point being that Ozempic's not a solution 
you know, it, it's another, it's another crutch. It's a support. It makes you feel less hungry. So if you want to eat the same food you've been eating, but just less of them, those empics probably okay. And you don't want to, you don't have time to change your mindset, your lifestyle, any of this stuff, then yeah. But, um, you know, there's ways, and I know this cause it's like, this is what I've been doing for 20 years. So it's like, I study people that successfully lost weight and, um, you know, there are ways to increase your GLP-1 hormone naturally. There are ways to eat foods that slow down digestion and stay in your gut longer, make you feel fuller. And uh, it's called eating more healthy, natural foods. So, you know, you're not going to hear that on Oprah. You're not going to hear that from your doctor. I watched the the special last a couple weeks ago or whatever, but the Cleveland Clinic guy, you know, the number one clinic, Oprah goes there for Christ's sakes. It's, it's you know, and it's like, okay, the number one weight clinic in the country and you get the number one weight doctor there and he's got nothing to say. Now he's a, he's a consultant for the medicine. So what's he going to say? But, you know, no one's talking about the natural way. I just did a video on that nature's Ozempic, you know? So if you ever look up natural ways to increase GLP-1 in your body, you know, it's the boring shit that no one wants to do. It's eating more fruits and vegetables, eat more fiber, eating more natural whole foods. So a lot of people don't want to do that stuff or, or aren't able to get themselves to do it consistently. So I know like, so that's what I mean. Like a, a Zempic, you know, it depends within which context you're talking about it in. So that's probably not the answer we're looking for. I don't know what to say about it. I try to be supportive, you know? So it's like, if someone wants to do it, I want to be here to support them. Um, Cause like I said, I have people, my program's diet agnostic. I don't give a shit. Keto, carnivore, vegan, Ozempic. I help everyone. So again, I'm, I'm not looking to, to crap on it, but um, I don't think it's a miracle cure, but anyways. What's up, Tabby? Tabby says, I realized I only eat when I'm hungry, but I do try to eat breakfast even when it's hard, but I do skip dinner most of the time. I really feel good and full and I do eat snacks or fruit, but dinner is rare. Um, you know, that's fine, Tabby. Again, it's whatever works for you. I, I, I can't stress this enough. And I say this constantly because you never get this message with weight loss. Literally, the whole weight loss world is built around, it's always one thing you have to do, have to do. You have to get stop eating carbs. You have to stop eating for 16 hours. You have got to get your calories under 1,200 calories. You have got to track your calories. You have got to get your stomach stable if you really want to lose weight. You've got to do a Zempic if you're really going to lose weight. It's always one thing. The whole weight loss industry is built on one thing you have got to do if you're going to lose weight. And it's fucking bullshit. There's 8 billion people on the planet. I've, I've studied this. I've, I've, I've done this for, for 30 years. I've been studying people who have successfully lost weight and kept it off. And I, what I've noticed is there's a, there's a million ways to do it. There are certainly commonalities though. And a lot of those commonalities come back to mindset, but the actual specifics of it, um, I've seen people succeed with all kinds of things. Now there's best practices that you notice over and over again. But so with you, Tabby, I wouldn't say, again, in Program Yourself, then we build around meals, the concept of a meal, because I think having structured meals sets you up to be able to optimize your eating so that you can start to know, okay, I can eat this breakfast and it gets me to lunch. I eat this lunch, it gets me to dinner comfortably. And once you have a clear sense of what you can eat in a day comfortably that, that manages your hunger, I think your, your chance of success go way up. But it's up to you to figure out everybody's body works differently. I, I mention this all the time. There, there's a, if you don't know about this, you really should. It's called the weight registry study. And um, I forget now, I feel like it's 30,000 people. I'm getting these numbers all mixed up, but I feel like it's 30,000 people now. And it's people that have lost, see, now I'm wondering if it's not 30,000 people, maybe 30 pounds. I got to look these numbers up. Long story short, it's people that lost a lot of weight and they've kept it off for at least two years. And it basically just asks them what they've done. And so you get a, a sense, again, of best practices. But within that, and I think, I don't know why, I'm, I'm, I've been off a couple of days. My numbers aren't as, as clear in my head. But I forget if it's like 80% weigh themselves daily or 80% eat breakfast every day. But that means like 20% don't. So again, you've got to build around you and you never hear this message with weight loss. But if you start building around you, what works for you, what's relatively enjoyable for you and what's relatively easy for you. And when you figure out what those things are, now you've got a real system. You've never had this before. Your entire weight loss, I don't know you and I can tell you already, your entire weight loss history is you metaphorically trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, trying to force yourself to do shit that doesn't work for you, you don't like doing, it, it's too difficult. You're not getting the results you want. And now you can't get yourself to start it because you're just apathetic about it. You hate doing it or you just hate doing it. So again, D Tabby, I, I think the fact that you're, you've experimented with some different things and you figure out what works for, I think that's great. And so that's all you need to know. Don't let anyone tell you again, the weight loss world is just, it's, it's literally a hundred percent. 
There's very few people that's talking about this like I am. Everyone knows everything and they're telling you exactly what you got to do to lose weight. And I, I can't fucking stand it. And it's like, again, even nutritionists and dietitians, and I respect their knowledge tremendously, but even the idea that you're going to go there and they're going to tell you what to do and then you're going to do it is it's not true. Your biggest problem isn't that you don't know what to do is that you can't get yourself to do it. No one's ever helping you with that. So good job, Tabby, because you're, you're experimenting and figuring out what works with you. I mean, Angie said agreed hundred percent, but again, Angie, I, I wish you the best with it. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I say, um, but again, I also tell you, make sure you guys go and get my, um, if you go to my bio, get the hypnosis session, get the, uh, video I made for you. Watch that. You know, it's really good. I think <laughs> it's free anyways. You know, it's not good. Just throw it away. Uh, would you ever have a guest on your podcast? Um, yeah, I think about that. I get people writing to me that want to be guests all the time. Um, would you guys be interested in having guests on my podcast? That's what I'm more interested in. Are you talking about like a guest, like another expert that I talk to? Or are you talking about like a, a person who wants to lose weight and talking with them? I've done both. I used to do, I did a summit series years ago. I call it, it was called the elite body. And I interviewed like a lot of the top fitness nutritionist pros on the planet. It was really interesting. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in, and I, cause I get, I get things all the time from people that want to be guests on the podcast, but I, you know, to be honest, I don't, I don't, I kind of like, well, what am I going to do? Have you on here and then bust your, your balls about it? <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Cause it's like, I'm not saying people don't know way more than I do about nutrition and muscles and burning fat and all the rest of it. Cause they do. Um, but, oh shit. Oops. Blurry. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let people get on here. I do that all the time. When people write in the comments, they're, they're I guess occasionally people write in their comments about you know just some bullshit supplement you got to take or just something you got to do to lose weight. And I disagree with so much weight loss world. So I don't I'm like I'm gonna experts on here and then just start arguing with them, <laughs> you know. So I don't know. Not that we wouldn't learn. I learn from them all the time too. But it's just like a lot of times they want to get on here so they can sell their thing, and it's like. I don't mind people promoting their programs either, but I'm not going to sit here and let them just spout bullshit, you know? And, and that's, and it's again, I don't have a problem. Like I think people are so smart. The problem I have with most weight loss marketing is it's always someone to be like, you have to do it this way. You've got to do this. You've got to stop eating for 16 hours. You've got to stop eating carbs. It, it's very much like that. And it's very rare that you get someone who's not articulating a very specific, uh, you know, prescription for how to lose weight. And I can't stand that. So anyways, but yeah, give me a little more detail what you mean with that. Cause I'm, I'm definitely open to that. I'm kind of thinking about different ways to do the podcast. What's up, Mario? Hi, Jim. Just got back from vacation. I'm really proud of myself for enjoying it, not worrying about my body and dieting while also not binging. Great job, Mario. That's great. I think that sets you up for a lot of success now when you get back. I've seen this so often. People go on vacation with a diet mode. I get this all the time. I find it very funny that a lot of times I will get people starting the program They'll like start it for a week and then they're going away the week after. And they're like, I didn't know if I should start it until I get after. I said, no, this is the perfect time to start because I'm able to let them enjoy their vacation. There's nothing worse than going on vacation with a diet mindset. Oh my God. And what ends up happening is even if you stick with the diet throughout the vacation, you get back so pissed off that you ruined your vacation that you end up eating for months then, you know, because you're mad about it. So I think um, mindset for vacation is wonderful. So I'm really glad you went there and enjoyed yourself and didn't worry about the the food and the body and the dieting, um, but also not binging. And that's very common too. Again, folks, what leads to the binge more often than not is the over-restricting, the obsessing on food. I find that that leads to more binging than anything. Again, the diets are not your friends, folks. I know it's hard to believe this, but all the diets you're referencing are all owned by big food companies. Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz. Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. The company owns Atkins Food Products, the same company owns Carvel Ice Cream and Cinnabon. Slim Fast owned by the same company owns Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. You're just being inundated with dumb shit in your head because they're it's it's a it's a war out there. And and it's it's hard to believe that people would lie to you to make money, isn't it? But the diet stuff is just complete bullshit. Not to say that there aren't aspects of it that are accurate, but the, the part I'm talking about specifically is the dieting idea that you need to do one thing. It's one thing. Do this one thing and everything's fixed for you. No one ever lays out. Because again, you know, you've been conditioned so much to look at the finish line as losing the weight, waking up at that goal body. And I'm here to tell you, like, that's not the goal. You, you've lost weight before and then you put it back on. You don't know how to live at your goal weight. That's the problem you got. 
you don't know what to do when you wake up that morning, you're at your goal weight. And I know you don't believe me because you just, you're, you're used to just like, oh, well, I'll figure out that I'm going to be a whole different person then. No, you're not. You need to start practicing living at your goal weight today, right now. And that's got to be the whole process. Uh, and then practice it once you get to your goal weight. So, but anyways, great job, Mario. Uh, Bell says, biggest problem I have is when I binge and say to myself, tomorrow I'll start eating perfectly clean. And then I binge even more. Yeah, that's absolutely true, uh, Bell. You know, it's that that's so common. You know, that's why I would program yourself then in the program. And this is what I'm excited about. I'm excited to get this out to the masses. I, uh, my plan's working out perfectly. I, I've been doing program yourself then for, for 20 years and I've always done different versions of it, but I stopped doing it like four or five years ago. I stopped selling the program as itself and I just did private coaching. And, um, then about a year and a half ago, I said, okay, I love private coaching, but I'm not able to do my mission. My mission is to help as many people as possible with their goal weight. So I said, I'm going to do a group coaching version of the program. That's it. And so I spent about a year, year and a half of doing a group coaching version of it. I redid the program, um, keep tweaked it a couple of times based on the group coaching. And, uh, now the program's even better than it's ever been. And now I've separated from the coaching. So you can just get the program, but the core part of the program is the program yourself thin technique. And it's really the redo rehearsal technique, but the redo technique to me is probably the most amazing part of the program because it's exactly this thing that you all make mistakes. We all make mistakes with our reading. And what most people do once they make the mistake is they say, uh, oh shit, I'm never gonna do that again. Um, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna start eating perfectly, right? We put out of our mind, oof. Okay, that's behind me, bullshit. Um, or we beat ourselves up about it. Oh my God, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why do I keep doing that? Either one of those two things is gonna cause you to just do it again because if we just put it out of our mind, we haven't created any new solutions, new strategies. So we're just gonna do it again. And if we beat ourselves up, we keep thinking about what we did, we're just reinforcing it. We're gonna do it again. And so the redo technique really sets you up to be able to learn from your mistakes. So when Bell, when you when you binge, never mind tomorrow, I'm gonna eat perfectly. No, you're not. Not until you learn what the fuck <laughs> triggered the binge in the first place. So the reading techniques in a way, just a simple version of it. You go back five minutes before you binge, you started binging. Where were you at? Where was your hunger at? How hungry were you? Where were you at emotionally? Um, and what was going on that, that triggered the binge? We've got to learn what triggered the binges. What's going on? You're not just binging spontaneously. There's something going on that's triggering that and leading to it. And once we understand what it is, then we can come up with a strategic, elegant, customized solution to the problem. But until you figure out a pro the, the solution to the problem, why would it why would it end? This is the craziest thing. Human beings are nuts for this. We, we're so crazy with this one. Uh, that's why you know they got to come up with sayings like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing expecting a different result. Because humans be crazy. This is the way our brains are operate. You know, we we've got brains that want to conserve energy above all else, so we tend to just do the same shit over and over again. But you got to wake up from that and realize why, why, if you've been binging, struggling with binge eating for five, six, 10 years, 20 years, why would after this binge, why would that now be the end of it? You know? So this just brings me home to one of the core phrases we have in program yourself then is that awareness precedes change. You're not aware of what's going on. You don't have understanding as of what's leading to your, your eating, why you're eating the way you're eating. Most of your eating is done on autopilot. Most of your life's done on autopilot. And so we need to start to understand what's going on here. Once we understand it, a lot of times it's pretty obvious what the solution is. But but clearly this, uh, oh, tomorrow, oh, I just binged again. Tomorrow I'm going to eat perfect. That ain't working. That's not going to work. So we need different strategies if you want different results. All right. So, um, Bell, one thing I would say again is if you're not in my world yet, go to the bio and TikTok, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session I give you and watch the video I made for you. I think that'll be, it'll give you a little bit more context to what I'm talking about, but I think you'll find it'll help you with the binging as well. Um, Angie says, I'll check you out on YouTube. Yeah, check out my YouTube. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate your answer. Yeah, you're welcome, Angie. Again, I try to give you a nuanced answer. I, I think everything's nuanced in my world. Um, and again, I, I wish you the best. I'm not, I, I know I know people doing Ozempic are desperate. I get it. I just, the more I learn about Ozempic, and I will say this too, I just will mention this, that, I've, I, we've all been in the weight loss world our whole lives. And how many miracle cures have panned out? And why would this, is this the, is this the one that's the miracle? Cause I don't know. It doesn't seem like it to me. And I think the longer it's around, I think the, 
I think the more stuff we're going to realize how it's just another medicine. Now it's effective. It's better. It's more effective than a lot of the other medicines precede it. I, I wouldn't argue that. Um, but we do not know what the long-term effects of it are. Um, we do understand what it does. And, and it fucking irritates me that, again, I'm not saying that you can increase your GLP-1 hormone as much as you can on Ozempic with natural foods. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, though, is that it contributes. As you start cleaning up your diet, as you eat more obvious, and it's obvious foods for me because I've learned practical nutrition. So I eat a lot of natural foods because I know that the fiber... And it, why do I know this? I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist, but I'm using my fucking common sense. Common sense says if you're a human being who's living in a body that evolved over millions of years in a food scarce environment where you lived off of natural foods, and now you find yourself in a food abundant environment with a lot of processed foods, that the more of those you eat, the harder time you're going to have mastering your weight. And the more of the natural foods you eat, the easier time you're going to have. And I find it very... I don't know, like when you hear the Cleveland Clinic doctor getting, I said this last week, it's like, if you got me on Oprah's show, right? I, you can't shut me the fuck up. I'm here talking to 50 people. And it's like, you got me in front of Oprah. I, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you this. Blah, 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 blah. And then there's this, try this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Would it work for everyone? No, probably not. But at least it's something different. It's a way to think about things in a unique way. The Cleveland Clinic doctor, I can tell you, doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anything about natural ways to increase GLP. Yeah, maybe you're hungry all the time because I was hungry all the time. I used to call it the endless hunger. Yeah, go eat fast food and junk food and lots of sugar and lots of processed food. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Um, eat that shit. Don't drink enough water. Be tired. Be stressed out. And then let me know how it is to try and control your eating. You, you know, and it's like the weight loss just glosses over the most obvious shit. So, you know, again, I'm not saying Ozempic doesn't do what it does, but it's like there are a lot of natural ways to get a lot of those Ozempic-like effects. Ozempic does it magically and they make it seem like it's magic. Oh, the marketing. Oh, the, the fucking songs. I hate it. I hate it. You know, I just can't stand it because it's disingenuous. And it's like, again, I don't know. I don't know the Hippocratic oath. I don't, I, I don't take a Hippocratic oath. I'm not a doctor. I take the, the, I won't bullshit you oath every day. You know this, I'm not going to bullshit you, but I think, I don't know how they square the two. I do. I know how they think about things, but, but when a doctor gets out there, it's like, they're going to talk about Ozempic. Like how come they don't even mention what food you're eating? And I know why, because doctors are so apathetic and they're trained to be apathetic and they are apathetic. And I don't blame them. I really don't. Cause you just you have a you know, person after person, you know, who's not changing anything. But I think it's because they don't know how to change things. I think most people now again, I'm biased because I work with smart, intelligent people. All of my clients are always overthinking, smart, type A, perfectionist type people that are successful in a lot of areas of life and struggle with the weight. Oprah would be one of them. And I find it odd to think. It's hard. There's a halo effect when someone's successful, like Oprah. Like, how the hell is she not, how has she not figured this out, right? She's got her personal chef. She's got personal everything. She's got the smartest people in the world. And she's out there and she has no control over this stuff, which is, it is weird to me. I don't know how that's possible. It's very strange to me. And then the Cleveland Clinic guy, he doesn't talk about Ozempic and GLP-1 and natural ways to increase GLP-1 hormone and reasons why you may be hungry all the time. He doesn't even address the, the fact that what people are eating. I guess everyone just assumes it and knows it. I don't know. I try to look at more holistic, long-term mastery solutions. And that's the other piece I will just say on Ozempic is that, now again, it just depends on the person. So I'm not, I'm not and I, I know... Huh. See, as a hypnotist, I watched that Oprah special. And what I see, I see, maybe I see a lot of things that aren't there. I, I, that's fine. But I found it very interesting that she built, based, the whole thing was about no more shame. And I think they're conflating the shame. And I think the shame they're really speaking to is the shame of taking, the big problem with Ozempic for my people is they don't want to be, they, it's like a crutch. They don't feel like they've mastered their weight. They feel like they're cheating. That, that's my people. Now, I'm not putting that out there because I think everyone should be allowed to do what they want to do. And I always say, I'm on a statin. I know people are very, that's a very hot button issue. I don't fucking understand how that could possibly be a hot button issue in 2024. But uh, anyways, but I like saying that just to point, I'm not against medicine and I'm not against the medicine I'll take for the rest of my life. Just, just to kind of set the stage. Um, that being said, I think that, I think there was that, that, Oprah special, I looked at it and I see it very, very manipulative. And it's a, it's a fucking ad. It's an infomercial folks. Like it is what it is. 
And I think the shame conflation there is that they're speaking subconsciously to the shame that a lot of people potentially may feel about taking this medicine. And so she's trying to say, well, the shame of me as a national pastime of shaming myself. I get that for her, you know, and I get the shame of the weight. So I understand that too. But a lot of my people don't want to be on Ozempic because it feels that they didn't master it. And so I think there's a holistic way to approach this that's way more, there's a lot more to it than anything Oprah's ever tried. Because Oprah, I said this on the, in the video, like, you know, she comes out with her big moment when she wheels out the fat and the, the little wagon she pulls. But she did that with a liquid diet. You know, in a liquid diet, you know, to me, I would respect Oprah a lot more. She comes out and says, listen, liquid diets don't work. They're, they're silly. You can lose weight, but then you can't stick with them. So what's the point? Okay, so you learned something, Oprah. I mean, is there any mindset work with this? And there is mindset work with those Empic too. You know, it doesn't magically make your your metabolism just start boosting up and you can eat the same and all of a sudden you start losing weight. It makes you feel nauseous, so you're not hungry. You know, it makes you feel kind of gross. If it works, <laughs> you get used to that and then you're just so happy you're losing weight that uh, you don't care. But it's not a great quality of life. You know what I mean? It's not an instant quality of life booster, just to be honest. Anyways, I keep getting sidetracked with the Ozempic stuff. Sandra says, your guidance on living a healthier lifestyle has made a real difference in my life. I'm grateful for your continuous support and encouragement. Well, thank you, Sandra. I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, the healthier lifestyle stuff is, is crazy. Again, listen, I always say the weight mastery pyramid, mindset, lifestyle, eating. I, I don't think, I, and, and I'm telling you this from, everything I'm saying to you comes from people that successfully lost weight and kept it off. I'm one of them now. But I'm not, I want to make clear, like everything I'm sharing with you is not my story. I want to be clear about that. Um, my story, I'm successful because I studied a lot of people that were successful. And it, they, it was night and day. When I started speaking with people that successfully lost weight and kept it off, it was night and day with how they thought about things compared to dieters who were always trying to lose weight. And so it was instantly, holy shit, there's a huge difference here in how they're thinking about things. So the mindset to me is always the core of all of it. And um but then there's the lifestyle and it's a bigger approach. It's not what, what most dieters people think about losing weight. It's like, they're gonna change one thing. I'm gonna cut the calories down. Well, if you've, you've been trying this for 30 years and it hasn't worked, you don't think there might be something more you might need to do. You don't think I I'm just always shocked by this. How can you possibly not think that your mindset, the way you think about yourself, about food, about exercise, about your lifestyle, how can you possibly think that that doesn't impact your weight? You know, and, and I don't, this is what I'm trying to say. This is like the, the Oprah thing is triggering to me just because it's a concentrated form of weight loss advertising and weight loss advertising is always getting you to fixate on one little thing like calories, for example. Right. So, so it's like, again, dieters, they just think in terms of calories because every diet is basically built around a calorie. Now, again, I get that you, you have got to reduce calorie consumption. You have to reduce your average calorie consumption to lose weight. So I get it, but there's more to it. You know, your mindset's going to have a huge impact on how well you're able to reduce your calories over time. Your lifestyle's going to have a huge impact on that. Your eating strategies are going to have a huge impact on that. So there's a much more comprehensive approach to this whole thing that no one ever talks about. And instead, what you get is you get the entire weight loss world telling you what to do. You've been told what to do out your ears, and you've never learned how to get yourself to do it which is why everyone with those Empics all excited. Oh, now for the first time, I'm not as hungry, so I'll be able to eat less. Yeah, well, there's a lot of ways to do that, though, that are natural and long lasting that you feel really good about. And they're all mindset, lifestyle, eating. When you optimize those, I know I've dealt with it. I know what it's like to be hungry all the time. Like, like I've done that. I used to eat breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack all night. So I know what it's like to just, I'll wake up, I'll go to bed thinking I was going to eat tomorrow, I'll wake up thinking I was going to eat, eat it, you know, just move on. I know what it's like. And it, it's not just, I didn't just change my eating. I didn't just, oh, I'm going to stop snacking. I'm going to eat less during the meals. I didn't just do that. Like it was a process of figuring out how to change how I was thinking about myself, my motivation, how to understand my habits, know scientifically so I could be strategic with them, how to understand dealing with emotions, how to actually think like a thin and healthy person, how to maintain, how to maintain. You don't know how to maintain. You got all or all or nothing. You know, so so once I had those, I like, okay. And then I started cleaning up my lifestyle. That's probably the biggest piece. That's the engine that, that try drives the whole thing, really, day to day. And then there was the eating strategies that I've been working on. And they're all customized to me. What works for me? So they all work together as a whole. 
And so I've never seen a one just, oh, just do this one thing. Huh? That's so simplistic. It, it's fucking stupid. And I don't, I don't mean to swear, but it's like I, when things are so stupid, I run out of words to kind of explain how fucking stupid they are without, without having to drop swears. I got to drop swears because <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. And then it's not only just stupid, but it's extra stupid because people have been doing this shit for decades now, failing with it for decades, everyone around them failing for decades, and they keep fucking trying the same exact things. So this is why I get out here for free every Monday through Friday doing a podcast to try and get this message out there. I don't know if it helps a couple of people. And it, it is. I, I, I love getting these back because it makes me sad because, again, life, life, wait for me is life and death. You know, my dad died at 54 of a heart attack. So uh, I don't give a shit. I want you to wear a nice bathing suit to the beach. But my bigger thing is I want you to live. I want you to live as long as you can have the best quality of life while you're alive. That's my goal for you. And I don't think the diets are going to do it. So anyways, I'm glad, Sanja, that you appreciate this. <laughs> Z, Jim, my favorite. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Z, that makes me want to take a nap. Uh, yeah, guests would be great. All right, that's interesting. Chuck says, no, I like you talking to us. I know, I, I've kind of wondered about that. So that's interesting. Only people that were successful on your program. Oh, okay, yeah, where they started Mindset Shift Experience and Result. That's interesting. I've thought some of these things too. That's interesting getting some of the feedback. Maybe I'll mix it up. I, I do, there are some guests. I, I can, I can record it anyways. I record it and see how it goes. <laughs> I am a little nervous because it's like, I, I do, you know, I, I criticize pretty much the entire weight loss industry. And, and it's like, I, you know, what do I say to you all? I don't take the Hippocratic oath, but I take the no bullshit oath. I'm not bullshitting you guys. As far as I know, am I wrong about stuff? I'm sure I'm wrong about things sometimes. Okay. But um, I'm not going to knowingly tell you bullshit. And that's what worries me about guests is I don't want to have to sit here and just be quiet you know, cause I don't want to like, you know, offend them or, or mess up their whole spiel. And, uh, I have a problem with everything. <laughs> so I got a problem with pretty much everyone's weight loss stuff. Uh, you know, I can't just have Tom Venuto on here every day. I love Tom Venuto. That's a guy. We, when I did that series back in the day, I really hit it off with him. We, we, we talked for hours a couple of times. I am a huge fan. So, but most people, most everyone else, I, I, I have issues with, so I don't know. But yeah, successful people in the program. Now that would be interesting. That is very interesting. And, and that's a great idea. And I'm going to do that. <laughs> hey, what's up, Deanna? How's it going? to the no bullshit. Oh, that's why I love you. Well, thank you. Yeah, I really do. I just think it's a the weight loss industry. I don't think there's any bigger bullshit industry than the weight loss industry. I really believe that. I, I think it's it's people just genuinely telling you bullshit to keep you confused, you know? So yeah, let's think about that. But I love that, Heather. I love that idea of the people that success in the program. Yeah. Yep. And welcome, Tabby. Uh, I do good until my premenstrual. Then I set myself back with two weeks of binge eating. It feels out of control. How do I navigate this and get past this next time it happens? Well, great question, Z. That's where it starts, okay? It starts with that question, you know, and recognizing your pattern. So that's why I say the awareness piece is so important. Um, women, right? So let's just say women specifically who are, you know, having their periods, you've got to recognize the, the, the fact it has, cause you're always getting thrown off course, right? There's the pre you know, the, the pre-period period, and then post-period there's all these, these phases, they're going to impact you perhaps not always, not everyone, but there's a good chance they're impacting you, your, your biochemistry, your moods, your hormones, your hunger, your cravings, all of these things. So I think the first step is really starting to become aware. I think you're, you're in a good spot already because you realize I sell myself back with two weeks of binge eating until premenstrual. So two weeks, maybe before, um, before your period, maybe it's, you start getting really hungry. So I know it's like, there's no, like, Oh, just do this. It's understand it, you know, start to understand it. What's going on. I promise you, you've got patterns. And once you understand the patterns, then you can start to be more strategic. And sometimes just knowing the pattern can help you start to optimize it. And, and realizing, okay, oh, here come the two weeks. I usually get a lot, I get hungry here and I binge. I promise you, you start looking at that way and you start optimizing what's going on during those two weeks. You're prepared for it. You optimize it. You start getting better with it. And um, that's the beginning of getting a handle on this because everyone's different. So Z, you got the way you experience different than other women experience it. So it's understanding because it's, 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 you have to start by paying attention because it's not just food. 
All right. That, this is where the mindset and the lifestyle piece comes in. So let's just say I'm just making things up here, but just to, just to kind of give you an idea where I would go with this stuff. Let's just say two weeks ahead of time, I start binge eating. Okay. That's a very, I know just from that, you're, you're ahead of most people because a lot of people aren't even aware that they're binge eating for two weeks before their period. I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of people don't even realize they're doing that. So the fact you realize that's a good thing, but I'm also hearing there's not a lot of awareness there. I want to know two weeks before my period, how do I feel energetically? Where am I at emotionally? Um, where, where are my kind of moods at, you know, uh, where is my physical comfort at? How's my sleeping? I want to know all these things because a lot of those things I can influence. I mean, so I mean, let's, I'm just making this up. Let's just say two weeks, the two weeks before my period, I get really tired. Let's just say. So I would want to know that. And so I'd pay attention to that. And the next month I'm tired. Okay. So during these two weeks, I'm going to get all the rest I can. I'm going to go to bed earlier. I'm going to sleep a little later. I'm going to do what I can to rest. Now I'm just using that as one example. But once you start to understand how it feels, you can start to go to work on optimizing it during that time, not just resolving it, right? So oh, I get really tired during those two weeks. Well, you can't just not be tired now, but you can realize oh, I get really tired. So let me recover a bit more. Let me give myself, let me give, kind of clear out a little more recovery time for myself. So I'm just using that as one example of many things that you can start to notice about yourself and you can work on optimizing a lot of different things that when put together can have an absolutely profound impact so that all of a sudden that's not the thing that's impacting your weight anymore because you figured out strategies for it. I hope that makes sense. Um, what is the program? The program is program yourself then. What's up, Connie? Traveled for work for a week and was so dedicated to the PYT evening routine the first few days, then just got, got so swamped. I'm trying to let go of being disappointed in myself for that and diving back in. Um, yeah, no problem, Connie. Th that's real life. I'm glad that happened to you. I always say this to people, I'm not a sadist. I don't want my people to struggle at all, but that's where we're human beings living a human life. We're going to struggle and we're going to have times when we're on track and times when we get swamped and get overwhelmed and get off track. That's just how it goes. All right. So, um, th the fact is you're back again, Connie. And Again, perfectionists always have such a hard time because they're always measuring themselves against perfection. But I'm a big fan of measuring myself against reality. And so again, for you, Connie, I put myself two years ago, if this had happened, what would you have done when you got back from work? You're right? You're like, oh, I probably went off track for a couple months. So it's fine. A week of getting off track doesn't mean shit in the long run, not in the big picture. And so you just realize how you got swamped. I will tell you, just, just knowing you a bit, knowing the situation, you probably perfectionist, listen to me. We need to have different options. We can't just have the all or nothing. We can't just have plan A. We need to have a plan B and C as well. And so as you got swamped, maybe the idea of doing the full evening thing, would just felt overwhelming and you didn't have a plan B or C. So maybe if you went and had a plan B or C that took a minute, maybe did like one minute of, of meditation, um, one minute of body circle, just kind of relaxing your body. Maybe that would have allowed you to be more consistent and that would have helped you overall um, stick with things better. But again, Connie, I want you to look at like what happened, you go back and replay it and, um, learn from it. Okay. And great job. Again, that's totally normal. That's totally normal. So again, there's no disappointment. That's just what happens. So we let go of disappointment in favor of learning something, um, valuable. Um, I say, Hey, I'm continuously gaining weight despite being careful with what I eat. Uh, my insulin level has become under control. What else do I need to keep a check on? My thyroid's result is always fine, but I'm always very lazy, no energy at all. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're going the the medical route, which I always think is a smart idea to start, right? Because there are physical challenges, absolutely, uh, that, that are real. Now, I think you can manage most of them and still lose weight, but I think it's very helpful to have eyes open and know what your challenges are, thyroid issues, hormone issues. There's any number of issues that could be. Um, the first thing what I would say you know, I'm continuously gaining weight despite being careful what I eat. When I hear careful what I eat, I tend to associate that with people that are just trying to cut calories. I don't know. Um, so without knowing a whole bunch about details about what you're doing, if you're, if you're primarily cutting calories, that's probably not enough. Um, if you have a physical thing going on and it's not enough for most people, but if you have a physical thing going on, just cutting calories, a lot of times not going to get the job done. Um, what you need to do is you need to transform those calories into healthier calories, more fruits, vegetables, greens, beans, more of those into your body. And a lot of times if you can start getting those into your body, it really transformed you on a, on a biochemical level. So, um, without knowing every, every, all, all the more details, of what you're doing, 
my first thing, just kind of reading words and, and seeing if they make any sense is, have you just been cutting calories or have you been transforming the calories into healthier ones? And if you haven't been, start focusing on transforming the, the calories into healthier ones and then see what happens. All right. Um, yeah, Connie, just dive back in. As soon as you dive back in, you, you, all that stuff that you let go of. And there, there's no there's no point in being disappointed, okay? It's, it's really not a big deal. It really isn't. I tell you that because, again, there, there's just a million times. Um, you're, you, you, we're talking about weight mastery, so we're talking about forever. You're always going to have times where you get off track. It's just there's no – see, the, the, the dieter always thinks that the, the answer is being perfect, right? You think you're going to start on day one and be perfect until you lose all the weight. And I'm always here to tell you that you, that's bullshit because you're not going to be perfect. You can't be perfect long term. So you better learn instead of trying to be perfect, the most important skill of weight mastery is the ability to get back on track quickly. So it's no big deal that, that uh, you know, for a week you went away and got got caught up. It's completely normal. Right. So now you grow from it. Um, how should I get? Maria says, how should I eat of work at the gym with weight? But I want to get smaller in tone, but not bigger. Oh, how should I eat? I work out at the gym with weights, but I want to get smaller in tone, but not bigger. Um, yeah. With, uh, you know, if you're lifting weights, that is a challenge in a sense, because the hardest thing of when you're lifting weights while you want to lose weight is that a lot of times you'll be putting muscle on while you're losing fat. And so the scale doesn't move much. And it's very difficult for people to kind of deal with that motivationally to see the scale not moving much, you know, so um, yeah, the main thing I would suggest is that, you know, maybe taking measurements can be helpful. You know, you need more, more data than just the scale. A lot of times, if you got one of them fancy scales, because you body fat percentage, you know, that might be helpful to get. Um, but, but get some more measurements, whether you're measuring yourself, you know, with a tape measure with calipers, whether you use one of them scales that measures body fat to some degree, get some more measurements into your reality. Um, so that you have more to, to take into account and then just base, you know, that helps you in two ways. One is motivationally, you'll start to see some results happening. And then two is just strategically figuring out what works for you. And so if you start to realize what's fat, what's muscle, where's my weight going, what am I been eating? Then you can, um, you know, customize what you're eating and stuff for your body. So you get the results you want. So I hope that helps out. Um, Z says, what's your advice for emotional eating? Um, emotional eating, my suggestion there is to figure out what the emotions you're eating for are. Okay. It's not unlimited emotions. Usually it's usually you have a couple emotional eating patterns where, you know, I don't know, sometimes the weeknights you're bored. And so you're bored of eating uh, the weekend you feel lonely. So you're lonely, emotional eating. And so we need to know what the specific emotions that are triggering it you're eating for are. Um, and then once you know the specific emotions that are triggering it or you're eating for, then we can start to work on the solutions. So that's my my advice is to start to become more aware of your emotional eating patterns. And once you become aware of them, then it becomes a lot easier to strategically resolve them. Because you need, listen, you know, if you're eating, if you, if you know, boredom eating requires a different solution than loneliness eating, if, if that makes sense, right? So because why? Let me just bring this point out. You may not even know this because, again, no one ever thinks about this. Because what are you going to hear? 99% of the time when you go in a weight loss world and say, oh, how, what's your advice for emotional eating? Or just stop doing it. That's pretty much what, what almost all weight loss advice boils down to. Just, just stop doing it. Oh, just stop emotional eating. And it's like, well, that doesn't work. So, yeah, understanding. Let's just say you're, you're boredom eater. Right. So you recognize that. Great job. Now, the next question becomes, <clears throat> what would you like to feel? Okay. I'm bored at night. Okay. What would you like to feel? I know it sounds like a silly question, but we don't want to just, I don't want to be bored. That doesn't give your brain a place to go. So, or a direction to go in. So I want to feel connected. I want to feel interested, you know, curious. <laughs> and so, uh, once you start with these words, I want to feel interested. So it's great. Well, what's interesting to me? What is something I'm actually curious about? I know it sounds so silly, but once you ask that question, you start finding things you're actually interested in and actually genuinely curious about, it makes it a lot easier. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> What's up, Joy? Uh, Lindsay says, hi, Jim. I was wondering if you could speak on how to let go of watching family members struggle with weight. I get that we can only control ourselves. Any advice on watching people you love spiral with their weight and health? You can only suggest and tell them what works for you at the end of the day. If they don't want to change, they won't. I mean, yeah, you just, I guess it's just making peace with what you just said. I, I, 
I always say this. I mean, if, if you figure anything out, let me know, <laughs> you know, like I have never found a way to, I mean, that's not totally true, but that's totally true. But it's, um, you really can't influence people that don't want to be helped. And in your personal life, it's such a weird, there's so many subconscious little things factoring in. And I know it's hard, but I will tell you, I will say this. Okay. Let me, let me put it this way in, in a useful way. I think that in, in, in neurolinguistic programming, we have our, our, our presuppositions, which is kind of like our commandment list. It's things to remember that you have to remember because humans don't remember them. And one of them is if something doesn't work, do something different. And so you being concerned for this family member or these members and their struggle, it's not working to get you the results you want, right? So it's like, it's not working. So do something different. And what that different may be is just letting it go. Stop talking about it. Just focus on yourself. Just simply because what you're doing is not working. So there's another saying we have, which is my favorite one of all, which is that the meaning of your communication is the response that you get. And so you have been intending to support this person and motivate them to lose weight, but it's had the opposite effect, I bet. I bet it causes them to eat just as shitty or more so because you're showing you know, more care and all the rest of it. So as weird and as counterintuitive as it may seem, I would change my approach 180 degrees. That's because that's what I do though, as, as a, as a coach, as a NLP practitioner, I'm always looking to adjust what I'm doing to see if I get the result I want. But I will tell you when it comes to in your personal life, people you want to influence, uh, I just don't see it working. I, I, I do this professionally and I can't do it. I mean, there's things I do. Do they work sometimes? I don't know. Maybe they help a little bit, but Nothing that I could just sit here and tell you to do. I would tell you to do it if I knew, because I, I think about this all the time. Okay, there's people in my life that I love. This is a this is a thing for me to deal with. That I want them. You know, I'm, I'm worried about their health. I'm worried about their longevity. And um, what can I do? You know. So I, I tell you what I do do is I I aim to just be there, just to be present. And um and I never bring it up. I always joke because I, I went through this in a more finite way with my mom and my brother who were both smokers at certain points in the past. And they were always so funny because they were both smokers. And then they would both, they would always quit at opposite times. And the person who quit would then like, Oh my God, they would just be like, you got to stop smoking. And this horrible. And I did this and I'm da, 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 da. And this person keeps smoking. And then this person starts smoking and this person quit. You got to always do that. And I was like, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. And I will tell you that being that, that person there, if, if, when they are ready, they're way more likely to talk to you about it. And so in that sense, you can be more helpful. So again, I don't have the answers to this. I wish I did, but my, my approach is that I just, I'm just there. And if someone wants to talk about, it, I love talking about it. I'm, I'm happy to. Um, but I feel like what do they say, the worst vice is advice. And if you, if you try and give someone unsolicited advice, it oftentimes has the exact opposite effect you intended it to. So I wish I had better stuff for you, but that, that's, that's my world that I've seen. Um, yeah. Bell says, I consider your program as well. Yeah, you should, Bell. I mean, the program, yeah. If you're a smart person who's struggling with your weight, I, I don't understand. I, I Let me just take a two minute. If, if you don't hear a commercial break, I guess it'll be a commercial break. Um, Cause I never do this on the podcast, but uh, I am now, you know, you can get the program. Literally it's $297 and you split the payments up if you have to. It's an eight week program. And this is the most valuable weight loss program that you'll ever go through. And it's like, you know, I, I understand a thousand dollars is a lot for people. And, and sometimes it's just a little uncomfortable. I get that. The 297, you'll, you'll save that money up in, in food for crazy. <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you're, if you're a smart person who listens to me regularly, who's struggling with your weight, I, I really, you ought to get the program <laughs> enough. <laughs> that being said, um, what's Shireen saying? The wheels went off the bus Easter dinner, but I enjoyed myself and sure could have done better. Oh, well, that's great. Shireen. So what? The wheels came off the bus for me. I went out to an Italian restaurant, which I, I don't eat Italian restaurants very often anymore. Um, I, I'll like make my own Italian meals on Saturday, which I like a lot. It's my favorite meal of the week. But we went out to an Italian restaurant that we'd never been to. It was so good. But oh my God, you know, it was like just eating the hell out of stuff, you know, just eating so much. But this is what I'm trying to say to you guys. That that's, it's going to sound weird, but that's part of the process. You know, part, like I enjoyed the hell out of it. I didn't feel guilty at all. I overate, so I felt full like afterwards, but there was no mental, emotional guilt. 
And so, you know, regularly in my program, I will tell you the thing that most people have the biggest challenge with is that we structure our reading. We have clean days, pleasure days. And the pleasure days are the things that freak people out the most. But I believe in my heart that if you've struggled with weight, one of the core reasons why is you literally do not know how to eat for pleasure. The only thing pleasure food eating means to you is that you're going to eat a lot of food. And there's a sweet spot. I know I just said I, I overate food. I ate a lot of it. I did. But um, that was an outlier. You know, a lot of times when I'm really e eating the foods I really enjoy, it's not the quantity, it's the quality of it. And so, and sometimes that's matched up with, with quantity too. But Shireen, for you, the eating a lot on Easter, eating it on holidays, vacation mode, that's what you're supposed to do. And that is not, that is not your, how you fucking eat on Easter is not why you're overweight. I just want everyone to know that the, the way you ate on Thanksgiving or on a holiday, that's not why you're overweight. Okay. You need to start realizing the 80, 20 rule that, that most of your weight is because of the 80% of your eating. It's not the outlier. Oh, cause I went to a birthday party and cake. Now my weight's going up. No, 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 no. It's how you eat consistently. So, you know, Shireen, you learn from it. Um, you go back in time and say, no, what I know now, what I've done differently. Maybe you wouldn't have done anything differently. It's one day. Okay. And you use that as like, okay, I enjoyed myself yesterday. Time to get myself back on track, which by the way, we didn't talk about this, but it's no problem to have this week be a reentry week. You know, if you've been eating Easter candy for the last week or two, um, it might take you more than a day to get yourself back on track. All right. So I know Easter kind of caught up with me. We did a real chill Easter thing, but there's a lot more sugar than I was expecting. And it was in a good ass form. These cupcakes. Oh my God. They were delicious. So I got that. I got that sugar coursing through my veins today. So it's harder to eat well today than like last Monday. You know, that's just the way it goes though. Okay. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, we just get ourselves back on track, you know, but, but I'm glad you said that Shireen, but, but again, it's not no problem. All right. Kathy said, I went to link and there's a download, but is there a way to sign up for email and download? Oh no, Kathy, I, I, I email you automatically. Once you guys opt in for that hypnosis session, uh, you're already on my email list and I'll just email you. And if you ever get sick of my emails, you can just unsubscribe, but I just do it automatically for you. So you'll start getting emails tomorrow morning and um, maybe today, I think I'll send out another email for the motivation uh, piece, but I got free. That's one of the things with the spark programs free. And so sign up now, if you go sign up for the hypnosis session, you're automatically going to the spark program and the spark program. I, I got like a, a site where I'm going to put all the trainings I put for you guys. Uh, I have a live training, not a live training. I had a new training. It was motivation, but I think I'll just, I'll, I'll kiss occasionally give you guys some trainings and stuff just to kind of keep you, get you motivated, you know? Um, but that'll be all free. Don says, I feel sad for my two friends who I see how I do weight loss. It's still going weight loss drugs. Yeah. And I get that too. I get that all the time. Um, I understand the weight loss drugs. I, I, I do think Oprah is a good spokesperson for that, that, you know, you get so desperate, you get so desperate, you're willing to do anything, you know, but uh, you know, I, I, this is one, one more thing I'll say about Ozempic too. Now, and I go, this doesn't matter for a lot of people. So, but for my people, it matters. And for me, it would matter. But you know, one of the people they talked about in the Oprah special, they, you know, she struggled with weight her whole life. And she talks about growing up, the, the food was her best friend. Then she talks about as an adult with kids, her father passed away and she went into a, a depression. And so it's like, okay, well, if you're on Ozempic, maybe you wouldn't have eaten as much during that depression. But it didn't, it didn't deal with the core issue. And, and that's why I, I see Ozempic not dealing with the core issue. I might use that as my short-term response to when I get asked about Ozempic. And so... The, you know, say this one was on Ozempic and she, her dad dies. Well, she's still going into a state of depression. She's just not eating as much. So again, in program yourself then it's built around being the, it, it takes your weight loss rapid and personal development. How do you be the best version of yourself possible? How do you deal with death of important people in your lives? How do you deal with, with changes? How do you deal with your kids going to college? How do you deal with change in relationships and reality? And I know a lot of people, no, I don't give a shit, Jim. I just want to lose weight. Okay. Well, great. That didn't, I'm obviously not even listening to me, probably. <laughs> you know, I know this isn't for everyone. My program's not for everyone. That's why I like doing these. These I, It has been great. The, the podcast has been wonderful. That's been the best part of the podcast is a lot of people now that join our podcast listeners. So they really understand the approach. That has been wonderful. Um, but, you know, to be honest, program itself is not for the majority of people. It's really not. 
because majority of people just want to be told what to do. And um, that's not what that is. You know, it really is for overthinkers that are just in their head that are already thinking over overthinking weight and diets and have been doing so for decades. You know, that's who it's for. But, there, it, you know, but you learn strategies to deal with the core issues. And again, I, I don't think I don't think there's anyone saying Ozempic deals with the core issues. So but I think that's important. I always say program yourself then really is more, it's a personal development program. It's really not a weight loss program. It's, 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 how do I deal with life? You know, how do I think like the person I want to be? How do I be the person I want to be? And part of that is being able to respond and deal with the challenges of life, you know, which no medication is going to obviously do for you. Um, hey, what's up, John? Hope you had a nice Easter. Penelope says, don't we know how it affects people taking it with diabetes? Oh, look at that. Um, Oh, don't we know how it affects people with the take of diabetes? Uh, yeah, yeah, Penelope. I think that's true. They've been studying these medicines for a long time. So I'm not, I don't, I don't expect that there would be a lot of, of side effects coming down the pike. Who knows? You know, they might just be side effects that we weren't thinking to look at. But the other side is that basically Ozempic's always been, those medicines always been trialed and, and used on people with moved along diabetes. You know what I mean? Like they're, 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 you know, they got diabetic symptoms so they're, they're that far down the line. So this is, you know, to start using it on people that don't have those symptoms, who knows what it might do, you know, and I don't know. But again, I'm not here. I, I, I don't want to scare anyone. I don't want, I don't like doing that. I don't want to scare people with the medicines. I could do that, you know, um, but I don't want to, I, I don't know, you know, if the, <laughs> I don't know what it does, but there's other reasons I can say. So again, um, are you also on Instagram? I am on Instagram. Uh, I've got two Instagram accounts, but I guess that the main one is program yourself then, which I live stream from there too, by the way. And I've heard it's got, it's got better audio cause I'm using the old fancy mic on that one. But yeah, I'm, I'm out in live every, uh, every day. <laughs> Those docs are also being brainwashed. I agree with that. I do agree with that. I love doctors. I, I think doctors are good people. I think, um, I think the medical establishment, I, I like medicine. But I do think the medical establishment is built around treating symptoms. I don't think anyone would argue with that. I don't think that's a very confrontational <laughs> uh, point of view. But but clearly, you know, they're, they're not trying to find cures. They're trying to deal with symptoms, treat symptoms. And, you know, Ozempic just one more line. That's why I say, again, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm sure the Ozempic makes much more GLP-1 than um, natural foods do. But I'm just saying they never talk about the core of the problem. The core of the problem, just to make it real clear, folks, the core of the problem in this day and age is processed food. It's flour, sugar, processed food with, with crazy ingredients in it. Your body can't handle it. Your mind can't handle it. And it, it's almost impossible not to overeat it. You know, you, you don't even have a, so I talk about mindset. Your mindset when it comes to processed foods, fucked, fucked. And there's no other word I could pick to, to describe what I'm saying. You, you are... You're, you're living in 1920s America as a cigarette smoker, and you have no idea how bad the cigarettes are for you. That that's where you're at with the food right now. You know, this processed food, Never mind Ozempic. <laughs> I would take Ozempic before I would eat a processed food diet. You know, I think, I, I don't know if I would do that, but I would definitely, um, the processed food diet, you're not looking at it straight, you know, and, and that's causing a lot of the problems. And that's why you never hear solid answers. That's why you'll hear keto. Which again, if you get into keto enough, it does get to the point of eating higher quality food. But um, you do not need to give up all carbs, folks. But the more processed food you give up, the easier time you're most likely going to have with your weight, you know, for sure. Um, John says, Oprah is a prime example of how lost, confused people are about losing weight. Yeah, exactly. And it's Oprah, which again, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. And I, I know everyone does because she's so smart and successful. It's hard to believe she struggles with her weight, which I think is what makes it so compelling. But on the flip side of that, don't listen to her about weight. You know what I mean? She uses her halo effect as Oprah to confuse a whole lot of other people. Because what happened to Weight Watchers? What happened to Liquid Diet? She's leading you all down the wrong path this entire time. I mean, again, I, I like Oprah. I, I've, I like a lot of the stuff she says. I like her manifesting stuff. And I believe her. She's manifested amazing things in her life. I think she's a, I love listening to her manifestation. Very few people have manifested what she's manifested. Okay. However, <laughs> when it comes to weight, she doesn't know anything. I, she's a very bad person to listen to. You can commiserate with her, 
But in terms of like, she's been leading people down the wrong path for 40 years now when it comes to weight. So, you know, I, I would suggest listen to someone else about weight. Uh, how do I let go of the impatience of my weight loss progress? Now, Bree, that's a great question. Um, the impatience is one of the main things you got to deal with folks. Okay. And it starts by changing your goal. You got to stop focusing on weight loss, weight loss progress. You said it right there in the words, my weight loss progress, your weight loss. You've been conditioned your entire life to think like a dieter and dieters only care about losing weight, getting to their goal weight as if getting to the goal weight is the finish line. It is not. It's the starting line because how long do you want to keep the weight off for? So I would suggest you shift your goal from wanting to lose weight to wanting to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life on near autopilot. That's what we do in Program Yourself Then. And it's all about living at your goal weight for the rest of your life. Weight loss is just a phase. It's going to take you a couple of weeks, months, or years to get to your goal weight. And then it's all about living at your goal weight for the rest of your life. But what you all are doing, you're always trapped in this, this, this roller coaster of losing the weight and then putting it on and losing the weight and putting it on. And it's because you never, ever, never, the goal is never for you to learn how to live and think like a thin and healthy person. That's never your goal. And so when you start making the goal about living at your goal weight forever, it starts to change the time frame. And I, I share that the, my favorite quote of all time is that most people overestimate how much weight they can lose in a month and underestimate how much weight they can lose in a year. So if you start thinking longer term and you start thinking next year at this time, again, I don't know where your weight, this is an easier. I can say things in a more compelling way, but I know your specific situation, but um, let's, I'm just going to pick a number. Let's just say you've got 50 pounds to lose. To me, it's like, I'd want to do that over a year, a year and a half, two years. Oh my God, Jim, two years. What's your fucking rush, man? How long? You know what I mean? Like, unless you just put all the weight on last month, but if you've been living with the weight for five years, 10 years, 20 years, what the fuck are you in a rush for? But it's weird. Because every pound down, every five pounds down, every 10 pounds down is exciting. What is your rush? Most people I know that are so rushed. It's, you know, and that's the other side too. This is the cognitive side of it. If you can wrap your head around it, is that you've been caught in this rush you rush, you choose unsustainable things, you lose some weight for a little while and then you put it all back on. How many times you've done that? Like at some point you got to realize for what it is and realize it's the rushing, it's the impatience that's actually keeping me overweight because I never approach this with a strategic long-term approach ever. I've never done that, not even one time. And I'll bring it back to, I'll give you a metaphor is that, you know, if you ever went to college or done any kind of training program, it's like, yeah, you want to get to the end to some degree, but it's like you, you, you ease into the process because you know it's just going to take a little while. Same here. If you're going to do it right, anyone can crash diet and lose some weight and put it back on, but I, that cannot be your goal. That cannot be what you want to do again. You know, so again, th th those are some things I hope that help you out. Um, yeah, Don says, I stopped with the timeline. I'm in this forever. That too. How long you want to keep the weight off for? That's the question I like to, to ask to get there. Should I cut sugar out? I wouldn't cut sugar out. Not right away. I would reduce sugar intake for sure. I would start to create some days where I don't eat any sugar or very, very little of it. And then I would have days where I can eat sugar. That's how I would suggest doing it. I think you cutting sugar out is... Give me a break. Give me a fucking break. You want to live your life and never eating sugar again? Is that the life you want to lead, folks? Is it? Yeah, you never want a cookie again? Never want a cupcake again? No, never, never, never. I know now you thought I want to eat fucking 10 pounds of sugar yesterday, but it's going to come back. So, you know, that's an, un, I know, listen, it's not the answer for everyone because everyone needs their own customized answer. But in general, I think the idea of cutting out sugar completely, it sounds wonderful. And it sounds, well, you're, you're going to get rid of your sugar cravings, right? You're not going to have any sugar in your body. And I agree with that to some point. But I think as much as like your sugar cravings will go down if you completely cut sugar out. So your physical cravings will go down. I don't disagree with this. But as much as your physical cravings go down when you cut sugar out completely, let me know how your mental and emotional cravings, what, what happens to them. 
when you imagine a life of never eating sugar again. Let me know how that goes. So again, oh yeah, the healthiest, best thing, cut sugar out. You know what I mean? Again, that's the weight loss industry. Yeah, yeah, stop eating sugar. It's bad for you. Stop eating it. Yeah, well, that triggers you to want to eat more of it. So again, I'm not here to tell you that the best thing to do, I'm telling you the most practical thing to do, the thing I see work in the real world. And the real world things that work the best are not these crazy ideas. I'm just going to cut carbs out completely. Again, keto, I can't say it enough. It, it's so fucking stupid. It's, oh, I'm doing great on keto, Jim. Yeah, well, how long have you been doing it for? Oh, I'm a third month. Okay, well, let me know when you're at three years. Then I'll be impressed. All right. But yeah, so sugar, you don't have to cut sugar out. You got to manage it. And I, oh, I could never manage sugar. Have you ever tried? Like with a real strategic approach? Because no one has, I find no one has strategies to like manage their eating. I, I mean this honestly, because dieting is not a strategy. Dieting is you just trying to force yourself to eat a certain way. and You fighting against yourself. A strategy is when you just kind of ease into like how you eat. So like Monday through Friday, I'm not eating much sugar at all. Friday and Saturday and Sunday, I eat, I eat more sugar. A ton of it? Oh, you, you can pound it? No, I don't pound it. I eat some sugar. I enjoy it and I stop. And Monday's a little harder not to eat sugar. I'm used to it now and I go. I ate some sugar today. There's Easter shit around, so I ate a little bit of it. So more sugar than I typically eat, a lot less sugar than yesterday. So anyways, th that's a nuanced answer that wouldn't make sense unless you watch my, my videos. So go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session, watch the video I made for you guys. It'll make more sense. It's all free. It's all free. Um, Don says you changed my life in every way. Keep talking. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Don. You're doing great. I'm, I'm just always very impressed with you, Don. Um, Jody says you give us plenty of info. Don't want a mixed message. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jim's a Seinfeld of weight loss. I'll take that. I love Seinfeld. I know some people find he's annoying, but I, I like him. I think he's a funny guy. And I think he's really smart. I think he's a, he seems like a very smart person to me. I like how he thinks. <laughs> that's funny um healthy vita forever long time no see you around happy to see you well thank you yeah nice to see you um is it a binge if it if it's all fruits and veggies <clears throat> oh absolutely i've seen i've been doing this a long time man people man there's some crazy eating behaviors out there all right so yeah people eat like 15 bananas <laughs> you know don't eat 15 bananas we don't want to do that either so yeah, I mean, you're always going to be better off binging on fruits and vegetables than processed food, me me believes. Most of the time, there's always outliers, right? But um, but yeah, we don't want to just, we don't want to do a crazy with the fruits and veggies either. Um, you can overdo it with anything, you know, and binge eating behavior in general is, um, you know, it's a whole thing. But yeah, it, it, it can be a binge if it's fruits and veggies. Now, that being said, that's a lot rarer. But, but again, I've been around this game for a while, so I've seen it all now. So I've dealt with lots and lots of, of outliers. So, um, yeah, but, but in general, I would say, yeah, it's still a binge if it's fruits and veggies, but, um, it's a lot less likely, a lot less, less common. Happy to be alive. How you doing? Um, Janet says, I brought my own fruit salad instead of a birthday cake to my birthday party. You have to train. Wow. Now that is a lot of. That's a lot of motivation. Now I get it. Hey, listen, you know, I want to be clear too. You know, sometimes we're just in the mode. You, you know what I mean? Like sometimes we're in the flow. It's like, shit, I don't, I don't want any sugar. I don't want any flour. I'm good. I don't want that shit in my body. That, cool. I, I, I'm, I'm there again. Listen, in my world, I'm all or something, all or something. And sometimes I'm all, I'm just in it. I don't want any of that shit. No, don't, don't, don't mess me with that stuff. But when you start doing this for years, very rarely, very rarely, are you just always in that all mode? Now, if you are always in that mode, then then ignore what I'm saying, you know? Um, but yeah, fruit salad instead of birthday cake my birthday party, great. You know, if you're feeling that and that's feeling good, great. I know what it's like. I want to make that clear too. Sometimes we're so focused, motivated, bought in. We don't want any of this shit, no matter what day it is. Great, enjoy that, okay? But realize if that starts to fade away a little bit, there's other strategies. Doesn't have to be all or nothing is, is my main thing, but... A great, great way to have your headset on and um, get your mindset on it and, and, and eat the way you want to. Happy to be alive, says my sister is eating a lot of fast food, but only once a day. It makes her fat. How's that possible? Um, I mean, she's eating a lot of fast food, but only once a day. Well, what else is she eating, though? She's only eating fast food once a day, literally. Because, I mean, like, again, I think we all know this to some degree at this point. But, you know, you if you eat a thousand calories, you, you know, you eat twelve hundred calories of fast food every day you are probably going to lose weight. 
So it, it all comes down to the calories. But in the real world, when you eat fast food, junk food, processed foods, you're going to eat the thousand calories and you're going to want to eat a lot more of it. it that, that thousand calories is a lot less satisfying than the natural food calories. So yeah, without happening to know alive, without knowing more details about that, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you the, the, the generic answer, but I think it's a good answer to hear sometimes. How is it possible that she eats only once a day and it's making her fat? Um, she's eating, she's eating more calories than she's burning. She's in a calorie surplus. I don't know. That's like, well, no shit, but there you go. How is she in a calorie surplus with one meal a day? Ah, I said all the time. I find, I find more often than not one meal a day, people, intermittent fasters, just, just flummoxed. How's it possible? I'm gaining weight, eating eight hours a day. Well, what are you eating during those eight hours? Because for, for the people that intermittent fasting does not work for, they're so hungry during those eight hours that they're, they're way overeating. So there's no, this one makes weight loss frustrating. Weight loss is challenging like this because there's no like simple answer. Unfortunately, it's always relative, you know, contextual. Um, Z says, great advice. Good. I'm glad you appreciated that. Uh, Kula Karma, how do you deal with a demanding job besides eating? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, that's a great question. I, I love questions like that because it's so real. That's a real question. And it's like, it's that type of thinking. It's that type of question you all need to be asking yourself. There, there are things going on in your life. If you're struggling with your weight, the first place I'm always looking at is what's going on in your life. Is stressful jobs, stressful lifestyle, stressful relationships, stress somewhere, typically. It's not always, you know what I mean? Like, again, there's always the specifics, but so yeah, demanding job besides eating. That's such a great question because it's such an easy win, you know, because the, the eating is not making the job less demanding and it's not letting you deal with demanding job at your highest level either. You know, it's like, it's like saying like, oh, how do I deal with this demanding job? How, how do I deal with this without doing some Coke? You know what I mean? I do some cocaine and I'm focused or I snort my ADD medication. <laughs> snort it. Where, where am I coming from? But um, I'm joking in that context, but you know, oh, cocaine, it might help you for a little while, do the demanding job. But at some point there's a negative effect of it. And that's the stage you're in with the food. The food's not helping you be your best so you can deal with this demanding job at your highest level. The, the eating now is just a, a break from the stress for you. It says, oh shit, demanding job stress. I'm going to stop thinking about for a minute and just eat. Oh, the relief. But it's not real relief. It's just a temporary distraction that, that feels like relief. And it is relief for a second. But the second you're done eating, all the stress comes right back and more some. Because now you get the eating part of it. Now you're more tired and lethargic. You're not thinking as clearly. Now you can't do the job as well. Now there's more stress. Now you have to relieve it with more eating. So it's not a solution. You're not in a solution spiral right now. So if you, it wouldn't take long for you to realize that the way to deal with the demanding job is to be in better shape physically, mentally, and emotionally. And the eating's not helping you do that most likely. It's doing the opposite. So as you start eating healthy, you start nourishing yourself, you start getting the energy, the mental clarity, the emotional stability that healthy eating and a healthy lifestyle and proper mindset give you, now all of a sudden you start showing up to work as a much higher level of yourself. Which brings me to a deeper point, folks, that if your main motivation to lose weight is just looking better and you're not succeeding, it's because that's not enough motivation. Wanting to look better is not enough motivation. Wanting to be work at a higher level with your job, wanting to be a better parent, wanting to be a better partner, wanting to be a better human being, not because you lost weight and look better, but because you're feeling better, because you're nourishing yourself, because you're living a healthier lifestyle. This is the motivation that lasts and, and gets the job done. So I hope that helps. Um, what is that doing to her health and weight? That's the person that's eating fast food once a day. Yeah, I mean, I would I would not want to eat McDonald's or any fast food once a day as my primary meal. That sounds like a nightmare to me. But um, yeah. Are compounded meds safe? What are compounded meds? I don't know what compounded meds are unless you mean like taking multiple medications. Like you take like Oralistat, um, Ozempic, Manjaro. <laughs> yeah, combine combine ingredients. I wouldn't know. I, I that is not not my specialty. So, um, 
compounding medications. But I mean, again, and I'm not anti-medication, but I am definitely as little medication as possible would be ideal. So, you know, in general, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of any medication and compounding them is not, not ideally what I want to go. But there's always situations where compounding medicines would be the absolute right answer too. So it would depend on the context. Don says, I have 30, down 16 a month, date of working on it. It will be a year and a half at this rate. So what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like when you get rid of the time frame, it's magical. It's magical. That time frame is the number one thing that prevents, it, it sabotages you. And that's the same for everyone, you know? Um, it's okay to take your time in order to do it right. Yeah, exactly. In order, I always say like, here's one way to think about it that, that feels kind of fun is I'm gonna do this one time. I'm going to lose the weight one last time, but I'm going to do it in a way where I'm setting myself up to live at my goal weight forever. You've never done that. You've never done that. I, I find that this is where I'm like, I, I don't want this to come across as conceited because I'm, I'm not a conceited person. Like I'm really not. I think I'm smart enough, but I don't think I'm, I'm no genius. That's for sure. And it's like, but I don't understand. I'm like, like the only person talking about maintenance, like living at your goal weight, mastering your weight. It's like, I, I don't get it. I do get it. Like I know, cause it's, it, it's, it's not an easy sell. You know what I mean? Like, like I could, I could make a ton of money if I just wanted to sell. I could just, I, I have programs. I could just sell like weight loss hypnosis programs and just sell the shit out of it. But I, I, I don't do that. Cause again, I, I kind of have a, a, a no bullshit oath in, in life. <laughs> so I want to build my, my, my career, but, um, I don't know. I think that, uh, to do it right one time, to commit yourself to it. So it's like, well, let's just do it right. Kind of like college again, you know, there's no shortcuts to mastery. There just aren't. And so, and you can master this. I think that that's an interesting point I will say is like mastering your weight. It's like a concept no one can even imagine. And it brings to light a much deeper point that I think is so important, which is that when you approach your weight loss, you're approaching it like you're buying a lottery ticket. Like you're less like... Will this be the time? Will this be the time it works? You've got no faith in your plan. You got no faith in yourself. You got no faith that it's going to work. And it's like, well, let's we'll see. If, let's try it this time. It's such a half-assed. There's no foundation on you. Have no idea what works, what doesn't work. It's just crazy. And so when I talk about weight mastery, I talk about the weight mastery pyramid: mindset, lifestyle, eating. There's six categories in mindset: eight habits and lifestyle, three strategies for eating. That's it. That's it. And then you learn the program yourself 10 technique. It's 19 things total. Oh, 19 things. I can't do 19 things. Just give me one thing to do, Jim. Just tell me to not eat carbs. I can do that. No, you fucking can't, first of all. But so what if it's 19 things? They're easy. You haven't broken your weight loss up into 19. You probably have panic attacks after 19 things because the entire weight loss industry revolves around the one thing. Do you ever notice that? Every single diet you've ever done is one thing. Just count your points. Just don't eat carbs. Just don't eat for 16 hours. Just eat one meal a day. Just count your calories. Just track your calories. Just count your points. Just It's always one thing. Just eat grapefruits. Just eat Mediterranean food. Just eat meat. Just eat vegetables. Don't eat vegetables. Don't eat cheese. Don't. It's always one thing. There's no one thing that's going to get you the results you want. And if you keep chasing the one thing with your impatience, it's a guaranteed failure. You're, you're metaphorically in like a, a hamster wheel spinning your wheels, getting nowhere. And that's because you think like a dieter. You've got to free yourself of the diet mindset, you know, and just do it right. Do it right one time. Be done with it. And when you approach it that way, I was just an example. Like imagine you want to become a plumber or an accountant. I was like, oh, I'm not very good with numbers and I'm not very good with tools. Who gives a shit? Go to plumbing school and I fucking guarantee on the other end of it, you come out a plumber. Go to accountant school. I guarantee as shitty as you are with math, you will come out the other side an accountant. You know? And dieters, oh, I can't do it. What? Because the first week it was hard? Which gets a whole other point because every diet is so overwhelming when you start it. You, you know, it's like, oh, why, why can't I? Jim, why can't I start my diet? Well, what do you want to do? Um, what do you think you got to do? I got to stop eating carbs. I got to keto. Okay, so you're, you're asking me why you can't. How many times have you tried it before? Um, this will be my fifth time. Okay. So you're asking me why you can't start this really extreme plan that you hate doing and have failed to do five times. What do you think the reason might be? You know? And so again, metaphorically, the way you're approaching your weight loss and your diets is 
It's like if I said, well, I want to learn to play the piano and I'm, I'm really impatient. I'm going to learn to play it fast. So I'm going to play 10 hours a day. Okay. You get through your first day, which you wouldn't, but the next day you wake up, your fingers are cramped up. You hate the piano and you can't get yourself to play. Is that a good strategy to learn the piano or is that a horrible strategy? But isn't that what you're doing to yourself with your diets? Jumping in hundred percent, overwhelming yourself and you can't get yourself to continue it. So what's an alternative to that? Well, what if you focus on mastering it? What does that look like? Well, you learn these different categories I told you about, but I want to start right away, Jim. What do I do? Okay. You start with your worst eating habit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And that's plenty for you. Okay. No, but I'm really motivated. Jim. I want to do something else too. Okay. Focus on your first eating habit too. First eating of the day, optimize it. Worst eating habit of the day. Let's work on fixing it. And what if you actually found strategies that are easy to do that fix those problems? And then you move on to the next one. That's how mastery works. There's no shortcuts to mastery in anything. Why would there be one with weight loss? And it's like, I don't know. And I will say, I, <laughs> I get smart people listening to me. So it's like, you know, you can handle this, but I'll wake the fuck up. You know, stop being a fucking dieting zombie. I'm going to say it. Stop being a dieting zombie moron. You're, you're way too smart to fucking try keto again. Oh, God. If you listen to me and you try it, because I always wonder, I always want to know, like, here we are. I know it's Monday, April 1st. It's a perfect time to start your weight loss thing. You thought, you thought Friday when you told yourself you were going to start on Monday, but now it's like, oh shit, I've been eating like shit. And I really did it up yesterday. Now I, I can't get myself to eat well. You got all the sugar coursing through your body, all, all the, the shitty food for, you know, you're not going to be able to eat well today. Oh, that's another week. I'm not going to start. So I don't know, like, like people that listen to me, I don't know what you're all doing. I hope you're, you're taking what I'm, I'm saying into account, but please don't start another diet. And then when you find that none of them work, consider programming yourself. Then where John says, I said that, John, three months PYT today and down 21 pounds, slow and steady. Yeah, John's the perfect example. And he's one of my favorite people to talk about because he started on January 1st. So it's easy for my brain to remember, but he was the keto intermittent faster. He, he, Talk about, someone talk about compound medicine. John was a compound dieter, <laughs> which a lot of you probably are. You're type A compound dieters, you, where you're going to do keto and intermittent fasting, and I'm going to work out really hard for a month, and then I won't be able to keep it up. I'll put all my all my weight loss will reverse. I'll put all the weight back on. But here's John doing something new. 21 pounds down, slow and steady, and he's done it in a way that is sustainable, maintainable. He could keep up because it's built around him and we took it systematically. So yeah, I know like people at the end of January, 21 pounds, I lost 21 pounds in the first two weeks. Yeah, well, talk to me and talk to me April 1st and let me know where you're at, you know? Talk to John January 1st and next year and you let me know about your bullshit keto plans and how they're working, you know? So that's a great job, John, good job. User 859. Oh, we got him into a live. So excited. Yeah, folks. Listen, we got these lives every day, every Monday through Friday, uh, 12, uh, 12. I, I'm getting better. I'm getting pretty good at 12, um, 12 noon to, I don't know. Shit, I'll go on too long. I gotta get out of here. It's almost two o'clock. Um, all hyped up. I wasn't able to talk for, <laughs> I took a couple of days off last week. I got a lot of talking to make up for. Uh, that'd be live. Also, I forgot to mention she eats at 11 p.m. and goes to bed right after. Wakes up in the middle of the night and then sleeps again during the day. Yeah, happy to be alive. That, that's not a good, probably not a great lifestyle. Um, Don said, I love personal challenges. April for me is alcohol free. Year three of doing it feels fantastic. Yeah, I love challenges. I think challenges, <clears throat> excuse me. Challenges are great, but challenges are short term though, too. And I know you know that, Don, but I'm just saying this for everyone else. You know, the, the dieting is basically a challenge, you know. Um, Lisa says, Your lives are 10. Pacific? No, no, nine Pacific. Yeah, nine Pacific. I'm trying to do the math in my head of daylight savings times, but I think California is three hours and they have daylight, so they're three hours. So yeah, I usually start at 12 noon Eastern, nine Pacific AM. Um, I told her, why don't you eat once a day, but eat healthy? I think that may be better for her health. Um, I learned so much from you always about looks and a number, no more move freely motivation. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And again, you can want to look good too, by the way, right? I mean, we still want to use the, well, look the way we want to look. That's fine. But, but that's the, it's not enough, you know, which again, by the way, like I, I'll say, I could get out of here as well as say it now, but 
Um, if you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session, watch the video I made um, for you, and then read the emails. And then I'm sending you, I'll send it out today, the motivation training I did. Um, it's 15 minutes. But if, if you don't watch this thing coming out more motivated, I'll be very surprised. So go check that out. Um, yep, yep. John, that's awesome. That is great, John. I, I, it's so great. Um, how big of a role does hypnotherapy have in your program? Uh, I would say I always struggle with this question because it's not like, I don't think of hypnosis in a traditional way. So I, I use the word like hypnosis a lot of times, like as a distinction from hypnotherapy. And what I mean by that is that the hypnosis has a huge part to do with it because I, I think the most important part of the program is the program yourself then technique, which is a hypnosis technique that I show you how to do to yourself. So it's a self hypnosis technique that you use. It takes a minute or two at night, but you've got to learn how to run your own mind. So uh, there's that. And I think that's the cornerstone of the whole program, in my opinion. But then I think hypnosis is really good as a supplement to your weight loss. So I, there's hypnosis sessions every day. You get a five minute hypnosis session in the morning, and then you get a 10 minute one at night if you want to listen to that one. But the five minute one's really important because why? The hypnosis helps you to relax and calm down, center yourself. That's a huge, huge beneficial behavior to learn how to do if you want to master your weight. And then you're hearing all this positive stuff. Each session has a weight loss mantra in it that's hypnotically kind of, and hypnosis isn't a scary thing. I know I, I get my Christians out there that are nervous. It's the devil's work. I, I promise you it's not because the state of hypnosis is no different than the state of when you're watching TV or a movie. You're, you're in this passive state where you're just kind of you're like, you're, if you're watching a movie, you're, you're absorbed in the movie. But if someone comes running into the theater yelling, you would snap out of your trance, your movie trance, and you'd pay attention to them. And the same thing in hypnosis. If you're my, my hypnosis chair and I'm hypnotizing you and I'll say, say, okay, and now you feel your hand moving into your pocketbook and handing me all your money. You'd open your eyes and say, what? So, so you're, you're aware it's not. It's not this state where you turn into a zombie and you don't realize what you're doing. That being said, um, I use the hypnosis sessions. You're, you're aware of what you're doing. You're listening to them in the morning. You learn how to become calm and relaxed. And I start helping you think like a thin, healthy person. So there is a lot of hypnosis in the program. But um, yeah, Deanna says the hypnosis is fantastic. Just get them. It's more like meditation, nothing scary. Yeah, it's like a guided meditation. And you're aware the whole time. Now, sometimes you might fall asleep. Sometimes you might feel like you fell asleep and then come out when I count you out. Um, but I promise you, I mean, there's nothing. It's just positive stuff being said, you know, and it's literally no different. TV commercials are hypnosis. So if, if you have a problem with hypnosis as a Christian, you better get rid of your television because that's the most hypnotic thing in your life. Just so we all know. Um, Mel says, I have, five clean, I have five clean days and two free days, but can't stop eating sweets if I start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's part of the process. You know, it really is. I know no one wants to hear that, but let me just put it this way. Imagine, imagine if, um, imagine if you were able to eat some sugar and stop. Imagine if you were able to eat some sweets and stop. Just eat a moderate amount and be done. How amazing would that feel? Can you do that? I don't know. Maybe you can't. Maybe you're one of the very, very, very few outliers who's absolutely addicted to sweets. But more often than not, what I see is that people, it, see, they're not free days. The biggest mistake I see people making with the pleasure days is they're not structuring them. So my pleasure days are structured just as much as my clean days. They're just structured with different foods that are more pleasurable to me. They're more the fun foods. With the clean days, are more the, the fuel foods. If that makes sense. But the pleasure days are structured as well. And it's that structuring that allows me to not just go bonkers with the sweets and or whatever I'm eating that day. Hope that helps out. Um, Issa says, I turned on live notifications. Also, I didn't get the motivation email. Um, Issa, I'll send that to you. I'm going to send that out this afternoon, another email for that. And then I'm going to stop because uh, those are those little sessions I do. You'll get a little bit of time to listen to them. If you don't listen to them, you don't listen to them. You know? Um, so, yeah. That's how that goes. <laughs> Deanna says, I tried the one hour sleep hypnosis on, or you just sleep hypnosis on YouTube and it worked well. And then all of a sudden a commercial came on. It was so loud, just jolted me awake. Oh, anyway, you may post that on the PYT site. That's a great idea, Deanna. Yes, I will absolutely do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Is it fine without the video too, Deanna? 
So if I just put the audio up, that's a great idea. Yeah, that that the YouTube thing, I can't even stop the commercials if I even if I try. They just put commercials on them and they just won't be mine. But um, they're not my commercials. I just I get income from it. But uh, if I turn in all the ads off, they still put the ads up. So yeah, sorry about that, everyone. Um, where and what do we do for your hypnosis video cost, etc.? Uh, the hypnosis and the video are all free. So you just go to my bio. Okay. Yeah, totally. That, that's cool. Yeah. I'll put that audio up. I got all those audios so I can put those up in the membership site. That's a great idea. I don't know. I haven't done that. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, user four, six, zero, go to, you go to my bio, click the link in my bio and it's a free hypnosis session called the new thin me about 10 minutes help you to clarify and connect to your goal weight. Uh, and then the video I bring you, to, it takes a couple minutes to process that session and send it to you. So I give you a video right before then three steps to master your weight. Watch that. It's about 20 minutes or so, but it'll, um, it's free too, by the way, but it just talks about everything I'm talking about just in a more systematic way, you know? And then I do have a program. If you're interested in that, you, you, you'll talk about it afterwards. Um, uh, I only do this on days that I'm not hungry at my first schedule meal. Yeah. Yep. It's talking about OMAD. Uh, yeah, there's a one hour and a four hour and they're awesome. I don't need videos to sleep, but I don't want to pay YouTube 13 a month. So to get rid of ads because I don't watch that much. I know that at YouTube premium, I actually, I literally have YouTube premium for my family. I wish it was 13 bucks, like 25 bucks a month, <laughs> but my family watched a lot of YouTube. So it's worth it. Uh, yeah. All right, everyone. Very good. We got everyone all set. So we're going to get out of here because I got to go eat my salad. I'm hungry. Uh, and but I'm hungrier again, I, you know, days after pleasure days, I'm typically a little bit hungrier, but I'm ready for that. I'm prepared for it, acknowledge it and work with it. So I, I just want to make that clear that, that how you start things is not how you finish things, folks. When you, when you start doing something new, it's usually hard and then it gets easier. So just, just so we all know that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for all your questions and comments. It was really good. Great to be back. Um, and I really appreciate everyone that, that commented. Um, do you have a payment plan for your plans? Uh, there's a payment plan automatically for the $300 version. If um, you want a payment plan for the, the coaching thing, you can email me or, or message me on TikTok um, and let me know and, and I can set something up for you. Um, or shoot me an email at jim at programyourselfthin.com. But, but there is a payment plan for the $300 one. It's already there. So you can check that out. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Again, if you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session and watch you know, listen to the hypnosis session, watch the video, read the emails I send you. I'll send an email out later about the motivation video. And um, yeah, listen to the podcast. Podcast is Program Yourself Then on all the podcast platforms. If you like it, listen to it and leave a review. That helps me out. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a super day and we'll talk soon. Bye.